Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, we get to trim up and clean up the forests. It's the second weekend in September and we have another absolutely stunning uh, pre-fall day. It's not officially fall yet, we're only a couple of weeks out from that. But the sun is out, we're in that low 70 range, it's just been absolutely gorgeous. We've got 70s for the next couple of weeks. The trees, I tell you, are loving life. This is absolutely one of my favorite times of year, fall. Get ready and anticipating some fall color on the trees. The big ones uh, up north when we head up to the cabin as well as, of course, our bonsai trees that have some color. So today we're going to work on a couple of forests and boy that's a lot of work of course the first thing I have to do is take these big things off the benches right and as I've said many times before the only trouble with big trees and big forests well you got it they're big and so these are a little heavy I only moved them about 20 feet so we're gonna reposition them now so we can work on these right here on the fire pit and uh, see if we can tidy them up just a little bit the first forest we're going to work on is the uh, old growth larch forest that I don't really have a whole lot to do. So this was a larch that I put in a couple of years ago. I had five in here with a great discount find at my favorite uh, nursery and four of them died. Not sure why and this one has stayed alive and is doing pretty well. And then the four here are the ones that I harvested up north in one of the uh, northern Minnesota uh, larch bogs. And uh, so some, some really old looking gnarly trees. We got the uh, growth all up at the top and some death and broken off stuff down here. Um, this one did die. We're leaving it in there just because, you know, trees die in the forest. It is a little one. It'd be nice if it was a little bit bigger. And we're gonna go ahead and put more trees in here next year and fill this thing up. So that'll be kind of fun. Got some weird shaped ones, you know, growing out there in the bogs. Who knows what they do to survive. Big chop right here, but this has taken over. It's kind of the new leader of this tree and some nice new growth this year. So it's surviving okay. So really, I'm just gonna take out some of the weeds on this one. Um, clean it up for the last time this year. I'm sure this will be probably it before we put it in the garage. Now, my debate is, do I keep this in the garage or out here? Now, out here I'm worried about critters, but they usually leave my larches alone. So, we'll think long and hard. Um, but I may put them in the garage up on one of my shelves and uh, keep a close eye on them. So, we've got some weeds in here that were slowly taken out of here. And uh, got some nice new moss starting to grow in here, which is nice. A couple of spots over here and back in here. So there's no moss that I had on here. This is just all growing from this year's summer's growth. So that's really fun. Got a little bit of this more Irishy moss here. And this will create a little bit more um, density of roots down in the uh, tree structure. So I don't want that, um, that more that uh, Irish moss. If that's what this actually is, it's close to it. Um, and it can go down and really take hold. Um, and use a lot of those nutrients um, that uh, should be reserved for the tree. So, go ahead and clean some of that up today. And then we have a little bit of moss back here, kind of on the trunk of this tree. I just want to make sure that that's uh, not too much near that uh, base so we don't get any creeping up and uh, creating any, any rot down here at the base of the tree. This one's dead, looks okay, this one is fine. This one back here is fine, or up here I should say. So not a whole lot of cleanup to do. We've got some fertilizer on here, so this will be good and ready for a big strong spring push. And then of course I have the maple tree that flew in there from the neighbor's tree. It's just growing right there because that's where the seed grew and we've just left that in there. We've cut it back I think once or twice this year. There's a definite uh, chop right here. So it's split off into two here. We're just gonna let this get big as well and we'll see what we end up doing with the maple tree. We put more larch in here, we'll probably take it out and add it to one of our other forests which we'll be working on next. So that is the larch uh, forest. And we have a few more tips here that we certainly can just kind of trim down just a little bit more. They're not going to push out, I don't believe, any more growth this year. And so this will be this final little trim down here on this tree. 
not looking to change any major structure or design of this tree at this point. And everything else is just uh, small enough where we're just not going to be too concerned about any of the uh, any of the branches on this one right here. We're going to let all that push out for next year. This one here. We're just going to leave most of what I see here. A little bit smaller up top. We got a lot of nice buds shooting back on the inside of these uh, longer branches here. So really nice. Really nice to see that. So we'll get some good new growth here next year as well. I believe this one's kind of coming right at us. Let's go ahead and shorten that one up a little bit here. So really, that's all I uh, all I need to do with this guy. Not a whole lot uh, to clean up. We've got all the weeds out of there. We cut a couple of the tips off. We're going to leave this maple in, and that's going to do it for this first forest. It is the larch old growth forest, and that's just ready to go uh, sit in its spot. See if I can lift this bad boy and put it back on its bench. We're going to lift with the legs. I'm okay, that was a little bit scary. A little wet back in there from watering earlier today and uh, I'm wearing my, uh, kind of my sandals and uh, probably not very wise and I slipped a little bit there. I gotta get rid of some of the rocks on these forests so they're not quite as heavy. I could probably lose five to 10 pounds of weight just with those rocks. So here we have Minnesota forest number two, I believe I always call this one. You can go back on the playlist and check it out and let's see if we can clean this one up. I had a viewer type in a question, um, I think it was our friend Matt down in Connecticut. And uh, Matt was asking the question about uh, some of these final prunes in the late summer, early fall, and will that, will that create um, an energy change and trying to push out new growth or is it gonna weaken the tree for the winter months? And I don't know the 100% answer to that, of course, because every bonsai tree reacts a little bit differently. It depends upon the growth rate of the tree and if it puts on you know, multiple flushes in a year, so way different with pines and junipers and uh, your deciduous trees. I go back to the, um, the main theme that I uh, talk about with the Minnesota Bonsai Society people and all the people I've talked to with bonsai. Um, uh, you know, you can work on a tree I gotta be careful how I say this, right? We can generally work on our trees um, multiple times of the year. I shouldn't say any time of the year, but we can work on the trees many times of the year if they're healthy. So if they're healthy, it's a good time to work on them. But that doesn't answer the question, of course, whether it's gonna drain all the energy out for the winter months. So I put fertilizer on here a couple of weeks ago. Um, we got that on close to the 1st of September. So we're coming up on two weeks and all my trees are doing really well. The weather's really nice maintaining a close eye in the watering and the trees are healthy. Now I'm trimming a lot of trees this time of year because I have enough trees that if I don't start now by the time I put them all in the cold frame I'll have a massive day or two of not being prepared and I'll have to do a lot of trimming and I might force really quick trimming and, and force it fast and make some poor decisions. So I'm starting now in the early September months with the trees that I believe are going to be okay and so again in general look at this Siberian elm right here. So we just did the Siberian elms on the most recent episode and um, we cut them back to make them all fit nice into their pots so they'll have, we'll have more room in the cold frame, make watering easier, get at the trees easier. So this one I'm going to trim as well just a few days later um, and this one will be okay. Will it push out a little bit more growth? Um, it might. Now the reason why I'm feeling okay about the Siberians is because of all my critter chops through all the different seasons of the year. So when the critters come at these and pretty much take them down to just a stub, guess what? These, like a Chinese, or excuse me, like a Japanese maple, they just push out new growth um, like there's no tomorrow most of the time. So I will trim this down one more time now here in the second weekend of September, and it's gonna maybe put a little bit more energy in, in, uh, into some possible pushing out of some uh, growth in the next couple weeks, but not very much, and it's gonna store all that energy. 
So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna defoliate any trees this time of year because then there wouldn't be any photosynthesis going on. But I'm gonna leave leaves on here. Just there won't be as many, and uh, it's gonna store enough energy to save this for the next uh, season of growth for sure. So we're gonna cut down the uh, the uh, Chinese elms here. We got a couple of them growing like crazy after some of the Japanese beetle damage. We've got uh, one of our big. Uh, uh, this was um, this was a sucker from the original. Um, aspen that we had in here. So we have a quake and aspen back here and I believe this is either a quake and aspen or it is a, I, I keep co confusing which one these are. If there's a cottonwood in here or if it's the quake and aspen, um, we got one of these back here as well. And I have a couple more small ones growing back there. I might add to the forest and add a couple more quakings in the middle in the spring. So we'll have all those yellow leaves in the fall uh, against the backdrop of the pine trees which is the dwarf Alberta spruces in the back there, which are all looking nice and good. And they got the new growth this year. The tips are looking fine. And we've got uh, a nice multi-Minnesota forest. Um, we got the elms, we've got the quakens, and we've got the pine trees. And I had a couple maples in here, but they have died off. But we have extra of those in the yard. We might be able to put those in. So let's trim this up. It's looking real thick and bushy. You can't even hardly see the trees through the front trees. So we have to do some, um, some pruning. Now, as I look at this quake and aspen right here, what's good to see is I've got buds here, I've got buds here, I've got buds here. If we chop this right here, we're going to get new growth on those new buds next year. But I don't want to completely chop this one back. So I'm just going to shorten it up just a little bit so we can just see the forest a little bit. And we're just going to go ahead and leave it like that. Now, I've got plenty of uh, green on here to continue some photosynthesis uh, on this tree. And we'll be fine to keep this storing energy for the year. And behind it, here's some more suckers. They're really little and tiny, and uh, they're doing really well. They're small and compact. I'm not even gonna do anything with these uh, trees right here. I think we're good. So hopefully those will grow up tall and we'll have a nice patch of three right here of the uh, Quakens right here. So that's really nice. And I've got all this Siberian right here. Look at how thick that got. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clean up some of this. So we're gonna do pretty aggressive on these because again, I know these will grow super fast and they will put on new uh, growth next year and we'll be just fine. So a lot of really nice growth on here. So that's this front tree right here. It's kind of coming up this way and bending over here. We've got some remnants of the critters earlier in the year. <clears throat> you could almost cut this one off right here and just let this be the tree, but we're gonna leave them both on for right now. And so there's the first tree. So there's our second tree and it looks like this one right here is just growing a little bit too too awkwardly into the other part of the forest it didn't, didn't look real healthy so i'm going to cut that one off and we'll let that tree focus more on this side for the growth i'm also going to cut this big thicker branch off right here because that'll i think it'll supply more energy to that right there and we'll get some more growth there so just trimming this down to size. And every time I cut back these Siberian elms, they come back really, really well. So we've got a tree that's kind of curving up here, fun. We'll hopefully get some more back button in this tree next season. And uh, we'll determine where this thing is gonna grow here over the course of next year. Always going back to, you know, two to four, sometimes six leaves. And all of that has plenty of photosynthesis to keep this thing getting ready to store more energy for the winter. This one back here has kind of a split trunk down below. Again, this almost looks like a sucker from the original tree and it did shoot up really, really well. We have some nice division back here, but we don't care about the top division right now. We're gonna just cut this thing back so it continues to uh, grow up, thicken up that bottom part of the trunk for a little bit here as we decide what trees will make it in this forest long-term down the road. Again, we're just gonna get this thing cleaned up for winter storage. And now we can see all our different trees. We've got some weeds we can pull out as well. And that part is all tidied up right there. 
Um, I may decide to take this one off next year and just grow this one. This one's growing real nice. It splits real nice into kind of your, your common Y tree, but this back here might get lost in this tree. So let's go ahead and just take it off right now. Now we have this cluster here and it doesn't impede with this forest right here, this part of the forest. And then I might end up taking this one off so we just see these two trees. But I like this one at the moment. It's got some fun movement and it's now got a branch that's growing back up this way. So we could see some nice movement of that tree, uh, especially if we ever use it as a solo tree someday. And uh, let's get rid of this. That's shooting off to the side here. Still some damage from the old uh, Japanese beetles on some of these leaves, but they've pretty much gone for the season, I think. So we cut this down just a little bit. We've got this lower growth down here, the taller tree up here, the pine trees that are really up high. Um, got a dead branch right here on the, um, on the uh, dwarf Alberta. We can make those into gins later on. So back here we have the great big tall cluster of now three. So what was nice about this um, quake in Aspen um, or cottonwood is that we got a sucker back here so now we have a uh, we've got three trees back in here which are forming up real nice this one's growing up slow it's still alive right here um, it we had a big chop earlier in the year but it's growing a new branch so that's really nice I'm just gonna cut it back just a little bit that's looking nice and all these leaves are just gonna fall off this fall so there's the little tree uh, from the chop this is the one that survived it's got this uh, kind of this split into two right here and we see we chopped it right here and we got this new growth right there i'm just going to leave that i'm not even going to mess with that one this is the new sucker one though and we're going to cut that one down just a little bit shorter this back here we've got a split that's pretty high i think i'm going to bring that one back down cut off this big leaf here And there's already new buds inside some of these uh, big leaf structures so we could get some more ramification next year but again we we've, we've lowered everything we've compact everything for the winter storage all these leaves will fall off these will be twigs and then we'll get some uh, new growth down here a little later on i'm contemplating cutting this one off because we've got this growth right here so we got the tree that comes up and then it comes up over this way but i do like having multiple trunks there so I think I'm just gonna leave it for now. We'll see if all this survives next year. We might even cut it after the first push of growth. Let's head over to this side and work on this uh, Siberian elm. Siberian, right? Not Chinese, Siberian. I hope I didn't say Chinese before. I do have one of those, but these are the Siberians. Okay, so we go ahead and we cut off some of these. We're just making these shorter. Going down to uh, four to six leaves, maybe less in some cases. And this is just a real nice fun tree so it's got a nice little movement this way comes back and wiggles up around this way and it's got this new branch here now it's pretty straight unfortunately but hopefully we'll get some nice growth in the coming year we'll be able to make a cut or two to to make this grow at a different angle um, but for right now it's a it's a decent uh, looking tree looks like a small little tree for sure and we're just cutting it down to make it more compact as we get ready for winter storage Here we go. Pluck out some of these weeds. I love this rock structure hanging out over the edge there. Got a couple of big rocks. We could probably take this one off now. Let's make this planting a little bit lighter. Huh? There you go. One rock gone. Got some fertilizer there. So we're looking pretty good. So we got this tree back here. Now this one had a really big chop right there. There it is. This tree covers it up, which is nice. Nice thing about a forest, we can cover up all that growth. And there's a nice new growth back here in the back, so it'll make it a little bit thicker. We just have it growing up here. I'm just gonna cut off the middle up here, right there. I'm gonna cut off this top section here, and we're just gonna leave the rest. That one's gonna stay alone. We've had some trouble with this one, with some dieback, but it's got uh, a decent thickness to the trunk now, and we've got a tree that's growing up tall. We'll let it keep growing. And then this one, I don't know if this one's a sucker from that tree, it might very well be the um, the quake and aspen grow uh, kind of like in the birch family. The, the quake and aspens have a lot of uh, roots that come up that underground, send up all the new suckers, and so this is going to be all related, and all those are related, and and then they take care of each other. Yeah, we're going to cut this one down to there. Got a nice new growth back here, and then this is the growth from our cut right here. 
Let's just go back one more. And uh, yeah, cut off this dead stub right there and we'll leave that. And we've got some buds back here, 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 and here. There's little buds in there. And we'll see if that grows out in the coming year. So that does all the deciduous trees. Now we have the conifers back here. And we got these nice, tall, straight uh, trees that we're just gonna keep thin. And uh, they're doing really nice on top. And we're gonna keep most of the death on the bottom. We're gonna keep that alone. And we're just gonna gin those out at some point. Right now they're just uh, a little bit of death from this year and we're just gonna leave them alone. And we'll clear out some of the smaller little branches in here and uh, maybe do some ginning uh, sometime next year. Any more weeds? Got a couple in the back here. The things are looking pretty good. Here's another uh, rock we could take out for weight, but I like that one. I don't know, that one's kind of fun too. This is my favorite though. I've got this flat rock too. It's like you're hiking and you come up to these big plateaus. We don't need this one. And this was actually a rock that we were using for this tree that was back here. So it was kind of a root over rock. And so my shadow's in the way, but here's the tree right here. And so that's no longer growing. Get some of those roots out of there. Oh boy, why did that, why did that not do well? <laughs> Had plenty of roots in there. All right, so we got that one out. When we add some trees to this maybe next year, we can do some digging in here and get rid of some of this structure. There we go. So this rock is no longer needed. So we were able to take two rocks out of here. I think I'll take this one off as well, and here's why. This composition now has a rock that's kind of edgy, like this one right here. These two are the same, and these rocks were all kind of smooth. So let's take out this last one. And this is going to be a forest that just has those jagged rock structures. and not the smooth rocks. So it looks very similar, very consistent. There we go, get the fertilizer in there. There we go. So now we probably lost a couple of pounds. We hope we lost a couple of pounds because it's time to lift it again. So there we have Minnesota Forest number two. We trimmed things up. This will probably go in the cold frame, but we've got plenty of time out all weather like in the 70s for a couple weeks. Let's put this back on the bench and try not to slip this time. Hanging out at the cabin cold frame right now and I've got a couple of updates for you. Um, those forests are in place back in the bench. I, I put the uh, forest number two in front of the old larch forest. I like the presentation a little bit better. We don't uh, lose forest number two as much. Uh, so those are in their, in their spot and uh, we'll sit there for a couple of uh, more weeks before we decide what we're going to do with them. Or they could stay out there for several more weeks because um, I think they'll just be fine even, they got a, even if they got a dusting of snow on them in the, in, the, in the late October, early November. They're gonna be fine for a long, long time. So those trees are good. But I've got a whole bunch of um, updates that I wanted to give you for this show. And the first one is the hibiscus. So it's funny, you know when you prune a tree, it's almost like buyer's remorse, but in reverse. P pruning remorse, like I didn't take enough away. So looking at the hibiscus, I wish I would have maybe taken more away, but we can do that next year. Um, if you go back and look at the episode, I did talk about how I wanted to be careful and not take off too much of this tree. Jeannie's hibiscus is doing really well, and uh, we got a new pot for it. We, you know, we got rid of some of the roots. We cut back a lot of the branches, um, but we can cut way more off for next time. And as many people suggested, and I probably talked about in the show too, is we might just chop the whole thing off. But we've got a couple of blooms to talk about too. Here's another bloom that's going to probably open up tomorrow or Tuesday, probably tomorrow, but this one opened up today. Let's get a close-up of that for you. There, look at this beautiful salmon orangey colored flower. Opens up real nice. I've had about four blooms in total since we got the tree. 
and about two or three of them since we put it in this new pot. So isn't that fun? And then it's going to have a new one come Tuesday. Maybe tomorrow. So the hibiscus is love and light. And I think this critter is not keeping the squirrels away too much. Yeah, we got to work on that because the squirrels got to this tree. So look at the damage right there. Right there. So I'm not sure if the squirrels are climbing up in here and messing around. But well, we gotta get the birdie to be a little bit better, doing some better, uh, oh, you know, surveillance of the critters. My next update is the boxwood root over rock, tree on top of rock. So uh, in a few episodes ago, we put this boxwood over a rock and uh, we had to get the deeper box to get a big rock to fit in there and to have this tree grow on the rock that we put underneath, which was a rock bigger than these two. And so, I just wanted to show you that we did this repot in late summer. Um, boxwoods have been known to be okay with uh, repotting um, multiple times throughout the year. One of my friends from the Minnesota Bonsai Society said, yeah, you can pretty much repot bonsai, uh, boxwood bonsai almost any time of the year. Again, if we're working on a healthy tree, we should be good with repots if we can take really good care afterwards. So this has been in primarily shade with some sun ever since we put it in this new box over the rock. And I want you to notice all of the really light green foliage here. So on the back, up at the top, in the front, I'm really excited about this growth here again because we needed more fill in here and this one's growing this way as well and these down here will fill up some of this space as well. So we have a lot of growth, probably a good inch to two inches in some spots of new growth since we repotted in the middle of summer this boxwood over the uh, rock. So I've kept this in here for stability. I don't even know that we need it anymore. It's really heavy and solid and so that is the boxwood so that's really nice. I'm going to push that aside a little bit for our Ming Aurelia. So when I was looking for my $50 challenge tree I came across this Ming Aurelia and it's the variegated style and I was really really taken by this tree and I wanted to do this as a tree on my own. So we put a little bit of inner tube in between our little root system down there um, that you can still see and we have a rock down here that's kind of split in these um, roots a little bit more, split them apart a little bit more. And we have some fertilizer on here now since of course I repotted it, I added some fertilizer and everything's looking really good. I've got some new growth on here. There's new buds that have shot up a, an inch or so. We've got a nice uh, bit of little new growth in here, really thickening up really nice in here. A lot of tiny new growth in here with the really nice looking variegated leaves. So I'm super happy that the Ming Aurelia is doing really, really well. And it also has stayed pretty much in this kind of uh, mostly shaded area because uh, these leaves, uh, especially with the variegation, a lot of the leaves can be a lot more finicky, a lot more uh, um, sensitive. And so in the full light, I had noticed these were uh, getting a little bit of a uh, burn on them. So I've kept them in more shade and boy, it sure liked the uh, partial sun versus the full sun doing really, really well. So we have the Ming Aurelia, we have the boxwood. They both are doing really, really well after their repots this summer. We'll see if we can do this quick. The neighbor just started the lawnmower, but the Ming Aurelia cuttings, all four of them, are looking really, really good. We've got some new growth on them. They look like little tiny mini Ming Aurelias, like the one I have there, but just mini, right? Miniature. Four of them have survived, so the Ming Aurelia cuttings doing really, really well. This is a new species for me, so I had no idea if it would stick around. So the next update, we're gonna go up on my porch and we're gonna go take a look at the Triangularis variegated, Triangularis uh, ficus tree. Here's the cuttings from that. And um, we still have green leaves. They are looking pretty good. We haven't gotten any new buds to shoot out on this cutting of the Triangularis variegated, but it's still alive. And I hope there's some roots forming in there. And I've had a couple of people on the show say, hmm, I would like one of those. So, um, and we'll see where I can ship these off someday. So we have the Ming Aurelia and we have the uh, variegated Triangularis uh, ficus doing okay. Let's go look at the main tree though of the Triangularis ficus. So it appears that the neighbor wanted to cut the backyard first. I thought he went up around the front yard and it was going to be quieter but 
didn't work out. So the final update, we're in the front yard where it's a little quieter here until some cars go by. And we have the uh, variegated Triangularis ficus. And so we had a little bit of um, leaf burn in the full sun uh, after the repot uh, about a month or so ago. And I was nervous about the leaves. They had a little bit of brown on them and they all are doing fine. They're still alive. There's a few spots that don't look as pretty, but in just the last week or two, finally, after a very slow, what is this tree gonna do? I'm starting to see some new growth in multiple locations. So let me zoom in a little bit and show you some of the new growth. I just zoomed up on the tree for you to show you some of the new growth which is getting me really, really excited. I hope we can keep this tree out for another two full weeks. We're gonna have sunshine, we're gonna have 70s for highs, and hopefully these leaves will start to push out and get a little bit bigger. But look right here, the new leaf right there and there, and here and here. Here's a new leaf right there. And there's one on that side and there's a little one right there. If we pull this aside, look at this little guy right there. Now this one looks like it's all white. It might not even be variegated. I don't know if that's from the stress, but there's two right here by my finger, variegated. These two right here are some of the bigger new ones. Let's come up here and bend this one back and look right here. We've got two there. We've got one right there. We've got a couple of young ones just sprouting up in here. There's one right there. We've got a couple in this cluster right here that are growing out and there's one there by my finger. So we have some new growth throughout the entire tree. Little tiny new little buds coming out and shooting up. One off of this tip right here. And so the Triangularis variegated ficus is alive and well and all the little brown spots from that leaf burn, um, they're slowly going away. Some leaves have falled off, uh, fallen off but the new growth is there. So as this goes into kind of, it's in that energy positive, it wants to push new growth. We'll keep it outside for about another two weeks. And as those lows get down into the 40s regularly, I think I'll take this one inside, one of my first ones to bring inside, again, because it's a new variety for me. So there are some of the new buds on the Triangularis variegated ficus. It is proving to be a fantastic fall so far. Let's keep our fingers crossed. We get a little bit more growth and we store a whole bunch of great energy to all these trees. So they're ready for the winter dormancy in some cases. And then some of the tropicals get ready to go inside to a whole new environment where sometimes these ficus will just drop their leaves because they're the finicky ficuses. And then they'll get uh, established in the plant room and start growing down there. But some fun updates for you here. We got those two forests trimmed up, cleaned up. The uh, weeds are gone and they're just ready for whatever nature's gonna uh, give it the, the forest for the next couple of weeks. It's just been a lot of fun. So hey, let's wrap this one up and we got more stuff to do here as fall sets in here only a couple weeks away. In the meantime, hey, take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we're gonna catch you very soon on the next one.